So this is a COVID patient uh, that is 46 years old with obesity, currently on a, a PCAPRV, awaiting uh, transfer to ECMO. The gentleman started with high flow nasal cannula, requiring a 100% FiO2, still remaining hypoxic. CPAP and BiPAP were attempted. Uh, however, non-compliance uh, with the patient made it very difficult. Uh, saturations were remaining finally on 80 at 80 uh, the sats were 80 and uh, we decided to intubate because it was uh, getting close to uh, 11 o'clock at night and to have the patient on BiPAP trying to rip it off satting 80 we had to intubate um, initially the uh, tomography yesterday that can pop up uh, showed that the patient was uh, significantly de-recruited uh, responded actually well with uh, the APRV, the lung opened uh, up, however the patient remained hypoxic, which uh, is something that is not necessarily surprising with COVID patients because they have many microembolisms, that's why they have high D-dimers as well as being on um, many of the regimes for COVID, not all people use it, but uh, heparin is given. So when you have a lung that is has normal aeration, however, remains severely hypoxic uh, when we, in relation to ventilation to perfusion, you can start thinking, well, the ventilation is up to par. There's something happening with the perfusion. And this is, is exactly what we uh, have been seeing with the COVID patients. So let's uh, look at uh, the tomography. All right, so this is what the electrical and penis tomography looks like when you're on AP PRV. So you can see that while the P high is being sustained, that the there's a good recruitment, that the aeration is staying right there. Okay, so let's just look at the image a couple of times, and it sustains. Um, it looks like there's missing an aeration around here, this area. One second. All right, sorry about that, somebody came. So these are the regions of interest, okay? And when you put yourself on uh, the main screen, what you'll see here is uh, region one, two, three, and four that appear over here. One, two, three, and four. This is a caudal to cranial view, similar to a perspective that you would see on a CT scan. So the gravity dependent regions are here. Um, so this is dorsal, mid dorsal, mid ventral and ventral. So dorsal, mid uh, dorsal ventral and ventral the normal for this is 8 to 15 these two here are 35 to 40 and then 8 to 15 so even though the box uh, the it's not filling up completely blue that's because the patient has obesity so it makes the image smaller so uh, we can adjust the uh, frame slightly smaller uh, to to incorporate uh, uh, for the obesity let's look at the APRV quickly all right, so this is the APRV setup specifically with PCAPRV. Okay, let's start out uh, with the traditional way of using APRV. Okay, so on APRV, you're gonna have your uh, oxygenation, you're gonna have a slope, you're gonna have a P high, a P low, a T high, and a T low. Okay, so the uh, P high, let's freeze this waveform. So P high is set at 30, so this is the level 30 here that you see here. And we're telling it to stay like that for five seconds. So your P high is set at 30 here, and then it stays elevated for five seconds, and then it drops, okay? When it uh, drops, it'll drop to a second pressure level that we refer to as P low. Um, if you're using it traditionally, you could set this P low. Um, and I suggest that the PLO is set where the optimal PEEP on a more traditional mode would be set. However, uh, when you activate the PLO, you're activating a PEEP valve, and that PEEP valve will create resistance when you're just releasing to ambient air. And that can cause a slow release, which since there's a lot of gas exchange happening, there's a lot of CO2 here that's building up. So you want a brief release that's very quick not trying to go through a resistance. So it's not suggested that we use the PLO. Instead, what we're going to uh, do is we're always going to come here and we're gonna look at our peak, peak expiratory flow, which is 
34. And then after, we're going to multiply this peak aspiratory flow, 34.5, times 0.75. You're going to come up with a, a flow, and uh, that's 75% of your peak aspiratory flow. So you have your timestamp, and then you will, sorry, you have your peak aspiratory flow right here. Okay, and then I multiply that by 0.75, and let's say it's roughly here. So 75% of your peak expiratory flow will be close to, I bet you if we do the math, around uh, 30 or 28. So it, it is trapping. We're doing auto trapping on purpose to create a P low without having to add resistance and create CO2 issues. So give me one moment, guys. All right, so the difference between your peak flow multiplied by 75, you find this timestamp for the second level. Then after you subtract, and the difference, which will be probably under one, this, uh, one uh, second, the difference is what you will set your 0 0.56, that's your T-low. So you're only allowing the patient to expire for 0.56 seconds, and this expiration, this brief expiration, is actually trapping 75%, and 75% is the gold standard for APRB, which uh, Dr. Nadir Habashi, you can see him on global um, Draker Global sites, uh, he uh, has a, f a way of ventilating with PCAPRB that's called time-controlled adaptive ventilation. Look up Dr. Nadir Nader or Nadir Habashi and check out time controlled adaptive ventilation if you want more information on that. That's pretty much the uh, guidance that we uh, use when we're using uh, APRV. It's uh, extremely important to use a slope when using APRV. Okay, uh, watch here and watch the tidal volumes. Let's say we put it at a traditional 25 default setting here. Okay. 25 de default setting, watch all of the uh, tidal volume starting to go down. And watch the curve on the top, how it becomes more steep. You see we've lost about 100 of tidal volume using the same pressure, but just the slope. So now we're gonna readjust the slope. Let's say go to 0.5, it's gonna start going up. Give it a breath or two. Next breath it's gonna go up, the volume. Okay, probably a little bit higher the next one maybe if we're lucky. No, so it's staying. And since this patient is paralyzed waiting to go for ECMO, we're gonna do one second. All right, you're back to very good volumes. And if it wasn't a COVID patient, the DSATs, if you look at them too long, uh, you could be easily weaning using a lot less pressure, okay, and getting a lot more volume just by adjusting your slope, which here, this is actually here. Okay, you see the difference. Now, the way Drager configured PCA PRV um, is, is quite brilliant. So what, they're, what they decided uh, to do for us is to create an option that's called auto-release, okay? The auto-release, you can turn that on and you can trap the 75%. Remember the, uh, the equation of find, you find the peak expiratory flow, multiply that by 0.75, look at the two timestamps between them, that is where you set your T low. Well, this is doing it for you. So if you activate it at 75, okay, this, if you're activating it, this T low max is not a setting, it's a limit. Kind of like BiPAP, you know, a TI max and stuff. So you want to keep that very wide, okay, and keep that at 75, okay, and then you're going to turn it on. Now, watch you have expiratory termination, you have that that T low max limit, but look, there's no there's no more T low anywhere because by doing expiratory termination at 75, what we're basically telling the ventilators to do that calculation for us, breath for breath. So, the cal the the auto release is looking again at your peak respiratory flow and then the time and then it's multiplying that by 0.75 because that's what we have 75 if it was point if it was 50 percent you multiply by 
by 0.5 and it's adjusting so that your T low and your P low okay are, are created and measured by your auto release okay so another thing that you want to look at here is when you freeze the waveform this here is not the P low okay sorry this here that's not five that is the circuit pressure when it releases it drops drastically and quickly but the lung goes a lot slower okay so to find out since we're we're stopping the breath at 75 percent of the peak expiratory flow we're air trapping we're creating an auto peak to create a p low and what you have to do for that is you just hold the expiratory turn it's going to drop we'll do it one more time so okay i'm holding the uh and then it creates a plateau and i freeze that and i go so 11 is the actual p -low. So because of the auto release, it will never allow it to drop to zero. So you don't have to put the p -low, and you don't have to deal with the resistance of the peep valve. This will uh, facilitate uh, you. So just remember, use a slope. When a patient is paralyzed, okay, you can use a much bigger slope. But if they're breathing spontaneously, they want a more rapid release and get back up there. So often like 0.3 to 0.4 in a patient that is doing spontaneous breaths, then it's a little lower. They seem to not synchronize. They don't like that slow climb. But when they're paralyzed, you can take uh, advantage of uh, doing a, a more gradual uh, slope. Okay, and last but not, not least, okay, uh, just realize that with this, okay, it's, it's a CPAP level and you can breathe like this all throughout it, okay? It's a CPAP level. There is no trigger on this. Let's go to extra options, okay? We see that there's no trigger available. So this is a CPAP level. The patient can breathe at any time. You can ventilate quite efficiently. If a patient is acidotic, you want to use a APRV, you can also by lowering the T low, uh, by lowering the T high and bringing it this way, shortening it, you're creating less time up there and more releases. What this does is create mandatory breaths that you can see over here. My screen's not set up, I could have made it, but uh, here's your T low that's being measured based on your expiratory termination. Now here you can get a very high respiratory rate, a very high minute ventilation with PCA PRV. So it is good to be used and it has a very similar profile to here. PCA PRV if I put the slope down, you have that decelerating waveform. So this is really time controlled adaptive ventilation by adapting mostly your T high and using the expiratory termination you have a well-adapted uh, ventilation for the patient. So I'm gonna put this back up here. Uh, let's go. Okay guys, thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope it helped. And uh, please post questions and subscribe to uh, encourage uh, me a little bit with this new channel and get some more uh, subscribers. Um, thanks a lot.